Hello world! Curses and madness be upon you all for live fighters. Apex Legends Season 7 is upon us as we finally ascend to Olympus. There's plenty of glorious sights to take in up here, but today I want to take a closer look at a family portrait. This season's comic again comes to us as a series of 7 chapters, and I can only hope that they fill out the end of the season with some community produced comics like they did with season 6. But sticking to the here and now, let's have a wee gander here shall we? Family Portrait. The hunt for an antique battery forces Lifeline, Gibraltar, Octane and Pathfinder to confront their pasts. Fantastic. As families are reunited, secrets are uncovered and their loved ones are taken hostage. But who's the real villain in this story? You only think you know. So, brilliant to have some more development for especially these three, Lifeline, Gibraltar and Octane, we haven't seen too much of. They each got a nice chapter in The Broken Ghost, but we didn't see anything really of them through Season 6 at all. Pathfinder got a lot of focus, so I wonder if they're going to actually continue Pathfinder's arc immediately, post his breakup with Ash, if you will. Let's jump into the first chapter. Requiem for a smiley face and see what happens. This uh, this season's art has been done by a new team, Valeria Favaccia and Antonio Fabella. Hope I pronounced those right. So kicking things off. <laughs> right in the middle of shit. So, about last night. I'll make it quick. One swing. You won't feel a thing. Please, don't. Awesome looking axe thing. Everyone's suited up. Life, ooh, lifeline girl. Damn. Psych. You thought that was the beginning of the story? <laughs> it's actually the middle, but it's super dramatic. So you want to stick around, don't you? Ha. Shay says I'm a terrible storyteller. That I meander. It's frustrating. Who's meandering now, Emana? Wait, what was I saying? Right. Our story actually starts with a couple of boring Marvins. Boring, dude. Brother hand left his side in days. Thinks it's a dead relative or something. Dumped. And now this. Wish we could power it on to cheer him up. You can find this Marvin in game, incidentally. We'll talk more about that once we get through the comic. So why don't we? So why don't we power it up? Yeah, wish we could power it on. So why don't we? That model's from last century. Got a battery pack that old lying around? I know a guy. Darian Shay. Darian Shay. So, Ash is Darian and Duardo that she mentioned and that got Octane especially so concerned. Darian was actually Lifeline's dad all at well. Dad? Chica, no. <laughs> See, uh, Octane's definitely worried about this. Silver, you're still playing with that knife after I told you? Darian Shea, the drone guy? Drones? Especially as we knew they were her parents were war profiteers. I wonder if it's like... Um, Airstrike drones, or if it's more like uh, Doc and things like Newt. Also, my father. So, her father, yes. And a fool who collects antique robots. Chevrex is hosting a charity event down in Malta tonight. We could swing by and grab that battery pack. Malta, huh? I gotta say, especially these like three pages, I really love how the art style makes um, Lifeline pop. Like, she's got this sort of just. Almost cartoonish, like, slightly, like, roundedness to her, but it just makes her so adorable. L not that she isn't anyway, do you know what I mean? But then Gibby gets these much, like, deeper lines and a nice bit of furrow to his face, and... I do really like the change in art style. It's only, like, a slight change. They still keep this sort of aesthetic goofiness at times. But everything, yeah, feels just like a little more rounded. The lines feel a little bit thicker. Feels a bit more bright and colourful as per Olympus. So, Gibby with his crazy, uh... What is this? Like some sort of... Sort of like a plasma axe or something like that? A plasma cutter? Hmm. I'll tag along. Do cops ever attend these events? That's a odd question. Why, Mako? You want to report a crime? Something like that. That's pretty fucking suspicious, brother. <laughs> well, glad to have you along, brother. Okay, we'll come back to you. 
You're not going without me. Yes, Octane. You can't jump into a tank full of tiburones y sipientes. I almost said that right. Without someone to pull you out. Tonight, I'm your lifeline. Aw. Me entiendes? As far as I know, this means... Sharks and snakes, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's like... Will you go, or... Do you understand me, or... But again, look at just this... Ah, oh, she's so adorable! But then there's still this really nice... Clean... Lines to their bodies and stuff, like you can tell that they're... Fucking athletes, right? Loud and clear, polish your grapple path, because we're going to a party. Exciting! What are you wearing, Gibby? I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Does he kill her? <laughs> Does Pathfinder die? What's Gibby's big secret? I already know, but you gotta wait. Ha, waiting sucks, right? Come back next week and maybe you'll see what I look like without goggles on. Octane's getting dressed up. I like it. But Gibby, man. But I'd have to kill you. He f Gibby feels really suspicious. Like this whole thing, like... The comic actually starts... Starting with this, and the sound effects and everything, this scene does make me think that this is something from like his Saras time for cutting people out of collapsed buildings or like quickly amputating limbs so people can survive like accidents. So it's a pretty cool fucking thing, whatever exactly how it works. I imagine like this blade edge gets heated by some sort of like generation thing in here that allows it to like he'll be he thinks he'll be able to cut off path's leg in one swing so yeah i reckon there's this is some sort of like plasma cutter axe which uh has to be gibby's heirloom like we thought it was going to be the sort of ads looking thing i don't know exactly what that's called but yeah to have this sort of actual sort of sci-fi translation from it that might actually have a closer link to his time with Saras, I imagine. I think that's this is a really cool idea for Gibby's heirloom. But then, yes, the ancient battery. We get started with this Marvin, who you can find in the left maintenance halls of Hammond Labs on Olympus. So we know that we now have to go meet Lifeline's dad to try and pick up an ancient battery. As soon as we hear Darian mentioned... I love that little bonk sound effect. And all the octane drawn in here. He's so just... Oh, he's so goofy. I, lo I really like this art style change. Yeah, he gets worried immediately. So they're going to a place called Malta, which I don't know exactly where that is on Olympus. I assume it's on Olympus. Especially based on the attire everyone was wearing at the, uh, in the first shot. But yeah... Do cops ever attend these events? Something like reporting a crime. And he's looking... <laughs> it feels to me like he like wants to cause a scene. Like he wants to attract someone's attention. Like the synopsis of this did say that Gibraltar would be confronting his past. I don't think we really knew that he had any past here. But um, apparently so. But then what does that mean? Like who could he be connected to here? What's Gibby's big secret? Yeah. And I really like, again, looking at the art style, I really like how how much like texture there is to Pathfinder to make him look distinct and different. Like, he's got way less of these thick lines in the middle of his body. It's all quick, sharp. And this one's like detailing over here looks really like etched in to make him look like really different. He feels like a machine person here, which sometimes... He almost looks like he melds in almost too well. That's really cool. Yeah, I really like this art. I love this goofy little octane on the end as well. Just riding Doc along. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'm really glad to see, especially these three, get more. Like I said, they only had about a single chapter really devoted to them each in The Broken Ghost. And each of those three chapters were really good. But then, yeah, they sort of got sidelined through the first ship and Pathfinder got all the attention. So I like that they're using Pathfinder as a through line. They've been using him as a through line for both seasons. Where he started last season sort of being, oh, Pathfinder has a girlfriend. 
the sort of Mirage and Rampart as our vehicle into learning about Pathfinder and therefore Ash and therefore Blisk and therefore Horizon like season six sets up quite a bit for Horizon and Olympus the more that gets revealed here like Darian Shay the more that we go through season seven now it seems there'll be elements of season six and season five and possibly even seasons before that that will crop up and be developed further which is great, like, their long-form storytelling, all the little things they've seeded along the way, their, their foreshadowing, essentially, is really, really strong. Like, all of this feels natural, like, the fact that we're getting some Gibby here when we may not have expected it is awesome. And then we've got this really strong through-line of Octane and Lifeline, who we know have some big concerns about the place. And Lifeline seems a bit more at ease with it, but maybe she's just putting on a strong front. Octane is also like chilling, sort of chilling back a bit more, being a bit more responsible, which is a big development after sort of their progression in the Broken Ghost. So I like this. Being in Olympus makes Octane more serious, which is actually really interesting. Their, their dynamic has almost like switched round. That's really cool. I hadn't sort of thought of that. And I like that we're getting Octane as like this interim narrator. I wonder if that'll... Uh, keep going through the other chapters that we get different characters as these narrators or if it'll be Octane the whole way through. Octane the whole way through would be fun because he's a <laughs> he's a terrible storyteller but he's a fun narrator. And yeah we've been given this as a tease for later on. It is kind of terrible storytelling it's also kind of not. Yeah this is great. I am uh, looking forward to see what you can learn with this where the battery pack is going to come from I imagine Duardo as we figured out who Darian is Duardo is going to be a relative of Octane's question mark and could they even somehow be related to Horizon again question mark she's at least old enough for it but hmm come back next week and maybe we'll see what Octane looks like without his goggles on we're going to get him dressed up yeah I love it uh, this is this is great. I'm so happy to see the comics returning in force. Focusing on some characters we haven't seen in a while. Developing some long-seeded elements. Lovely amounts of goof. Nice music sound effects. I like the new art style. Lifeline looks fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Happy days. Pretty family portrait. I wonder what the Requiem for a Smiley Face is about. I assume that means the smiley faces aren't going to continue. But yeah, Gibby's going to cause a scene, man. And I'm not sure why. Be interesting to see what kind of ties he actually does have to this place. But Heavenly, that's for next time. So, this has been the first chapter of Family Portrait, the Apex Legends Season 7 comic. And Octane is right. Waiting sucks, man. Like, uh, I want the next chapter already. I'm glad this was available so quickly into Season 7. And let's hope it keeps up this pace, because we're getting straight into things. I hope you enjoyed my quick breakdown of my thoughts on this. Thanks for staying with me, friends. I've been Euclidean Vision, the emotional support. Take care of yourselves up there. And may the glorious light of Best Girl shine within you. Bye-bye.